Hey, welcome back again uh, to you uh, mechanical fuel injection enthusiasts. Um, today I want to talk uh, in detail, well, more detail, about the high-speed bypass valve. So the high-speed high bypass valve obviously uh, drops the fuel back a little bit when you're at high RPM, pressure's high enough, opens the little valve in here, uh, it's set with the spring pressure, there's a ball inside of here, uh, tapers off the fuel a little bit when you get to the high RPM uh, due to the uh, loss of uh, uh, volumetric efficiency of the engine. We talked about that in a couple of my previous videos. Um, this particular type, now the newer ones, a lot of them are, are diaphragm type, totally different design, uh, but these older ones, and there's a lot of them out there in use, I'm going to show you some potential problems, uh, maybe help you out a little bit. If, you're, if you have a problem with your engine, you wind it up and then all of a sudden through the the fuel falls off and the engine, you know, stumbles, uh, you might want to watch this video. So here we go. I'm going to show you a couple of things to really look out for. Okay, so here we're looking at the high-speed bypass. Uh, we've seen this before in my previous videos, but this is the high-speed bypass, which helps uh, relieve some of the fuel, release some of the fuel back to the tank when you're at high pressure. In other words, you're getting in the high end of the motor, high RPMs because of the loss of uh, volumetric efficiency of the motor, which I also discussed a couple of times. Uh, your need for fuel tapers off a little bit as you increase in RPM. So the, the purpose of the high-speed bypass is that when you hit that high pressure, uh, the little ball in there and the spring, uh, you set it for the pressure you want it to start to relieve at. And what it does is this is your high pressure side. This is connected to your the same line that goes up to your uh, uh, to your barrel valve and your nozzles. Right. So when you hit, you know, it could be, you know, depending on your motor, it could be, you know, 80 psi, 90, 100 psi, maybe even more than that, depending on what you're running, uh, the RPMs you you run your system at. But uh, what happens is when you hit that pressure, whatever you have this spring inside set at. It, uh, as soon as you hit that pressure, it opens up that ball. There's enough pressure to push against and uh, overcompensate that spring, open the ball, lets fuel through, and then through that little uh, little uh, pill that's in here. So let's take this apart. Uh, this is the end where the pill is. You know, the pill is back in there, your jet or pill. And of course, this is you would size this depending on how much fuel you want to drain off uh, after you hit that high pressure. Now this spring here is only to hold the adjustment of this. This is different than a lot of them. Some of them you have to, you put your spring in there and then you have to put shims in there if you want to increase the pressure. Uh, this one is a little different than many. This is actually threaded, which makes it really handy that so you can, you know, when you're adjusting it, you can just tighten it or loosen it, increase the pressure, reduce the pressure that it activates at. So we'll take this out and let's take a look at this. Now the reason I'm showing you this is because I ran across another issue with this system that I'm sure is not uncommon, but okay, so, so you see now that's the spring. Now we could change that spring to a heavier one or a looser one. This one's kind of an intermediate. I crank it up really tight Obviously, you got, it doesn't release until we get high pressure. We can back it off, make it a little softer, and it'll re it'll uh, release relieve pressure at a lower level. Okay, so that's the spring. That's the adjustment. We'll set that down. Now, so here's the ball that's in here. You know, unlike the other ones, it's use a pop. It this uses a round steel ball, and that just fits into a seat up inside there. And I don't have a light, but it just you know it's just a valve, right? But now I want you to look at this. Look at this, this is, this is the ball I pulled out of it. It's rusty. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on my, uh, I got a microscope here. I'm gonna put it on a microscope and show you that in just a second. Let's take a closer look at this. Okay, now this is a little, a little inexpensive microscope that I bought. I'll put a link to it if anybody's interested in it. In the, description but okay I can look at that ball here let me tilt this up a little bit and get a better look at it uh, 
Look at that son of a gun. I'm going to see if I can rotate it around a little bit so you can... Look at the... Look at the stuff on it. I mean, that's just... Let me see if I can focus a little bit more. Yeah, maybe like that. But look at this stuff all over the thing. I mean, that is obviously not going to seal. You know, and so the reason it looks like it is I, I let the system sit uh, for some length of time without running it. And I had methanol in the system. You know, I run alcohol. And so what had happened was um, I uh, had we went to went to start it and it started up okay and it ran for a little bit and I'm trying to get it so you can see a little bit more of that it ran for a little bit and I you know I revved it up and then all of a sudden it was like boom I, well not boom <laughs> but the thing just died you know all of a sudden it's like wow no fuel pressure Her fuel pressure dropped to a minimal amount and of course the butterflies were open and uh, we were demanding more more uh, you know fluid uh, fuel what happened here and uh, so anyway they just starved the engine for fuel so you know I struggled and struggled trying to figure out what's going on well obviously if this thing if I rev it up it opens this valve opens this valve up starts draining off a little bit of the high pressure stuff and then the RPMs come back down a little bit. This should close back up as soon as that pressure, you know, drops back below, you know, whatever it's set at. I think this is like 90, 90 pounds, but so it should seal back up to keep, you know, your your pressure in the system, the ADP assigned, you know, wherever it's running at below the high speed threshold. But if it doesn't, if it hangs open, like it's got rust and stuff all over it, it's a leak path. So all of a sudden you drain in, you just keep draining fuel off and obviously your pump can't keep up with that and it's, the motor's gonna die. So I just wanted to share this with guys. It's like, you know, I've had this thing, you know, during the course of this series apart a number of times and we, you know, just to show parts of it and this and that and, you know, and this is something that I, I just didn't, I overlooked it, you know, I'm human too. I uh, was just playing with it here the other day, and I it just I, on a quirk, I was poking at the little ball in there. I don't know, just making, checking the spring pressure, just playing with it really. And uh, I'm like, "What's that discoloration down in there?" And I pulled it apart, and this is what I saw. So, anyway, so what we got is uh, I'm gonna switch the camera around here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna fix it, right? So give me just a second, we'll, I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got this ball, and I want to replace it, obviously. Um, but, you know, Crower doesn't, hasn't made fuel injection systems, and, in, uh, you know, they don't do fuel, they sold it to Ron's Racing, I don't know, 30 years ago, something like that. You, you probably could not find one of these balls anywhere. So we take our little indicator, and it comes up, it's about four, and, and obviously I know with the rust on there I'm not going to get an accurate measurement but it's maybe 400 and I think I got 440 as the as the actual measurement but say 400 thousands uh, around there okay so I need to find a ball that's really close now if it's a little tiny bit smaller or a little tiny bit bigger it's still going to seat in that uh, around the seat of that brass so so what I found was all right, so it's overkill, but I found this this kit uh, in there. Their, it says chrome steel bearing, ball bearings. On the advertisement, it said they were 304 stainless. Uh, I don't think they're 304 stainless because they, uh, they, they, they attracted my magnet. But anyhow, so I found this guy in the kit, and it measures. Let's see what we get out of that. Okay, so it's it's pretty darn close. This is like four. Let's see, four. That's four thirty. It's like four thirty-eight and a half. All right, I'll set that down there. 
and what did we say who this guy was? And again, I know it's not going to be accurate because there's see all that rusty. So that added ten thousands hitting that rusty spot. So you know that's enough to there. It's four thirty eight, four thirty six. Anyhow, that's the ball I'm going to. This is the ball I'm going to use, and I think it should work fine. So anyhow, the message is, you know, keep an eye on this kind of stuff, especially if you don't run it. You know, if you if you run it every day or you run it regularly, you probably don't have to worry about it. Mine sat for some time with some ethanol in it, and and it doesn't take much. So anyhow, uh, we're going to take this and just drop it back in my can and take. You know my adjustment put that back in there if I can get it started you know why is it whenever you start doing this stuff you know your fingers don't seem to work and you can't get stuff started okay I got that started put my big old fat screwdriver in there so I don't tear up the brass too much spin it around it's easy to do round and round a bunch of times okay so then we get it down there where I think it was originally. Uh, which was down, it was down there pretty good. Okay, so now what I'll do is I take this, I put my adapter on there, put my gauges on it, and I set the pressure, well, Set the pressure for higher pressure, you know, at whatever, uh, 110 or 100 feet, whatever. And then I'm at right hand gauge. You watch that, and as you adjust this, cranking this in and out, watch it until this valve opens up. It, well, you'll see it. It'll, it'll, the gauge will stay at that pressure. So that's where you, that's how you set the thing back up. And maybe I'll show you that in another video if I. I think everybody understands that, but you know, there might be some guys that want to see me do that. But And then of course this just goes back in like that. The spring again just holds that uh, adjustment from slide, from backing out, from unscrewing. Put that back in together like that. And yeah, obviously this has got to go down further. It's, uh, I, didn't, I didn't crank it down all the way. But anyways. Make that guy to, there it is. And uh, so there you have it. Get back together. Now I'm gonna give it a whirl after I set my uh, pressure. I think I'm gonna set this back at, uh, I have to look at my card. I think I added it at 85 or 90, I don't remember. Anyhow, keep an eye out for those kind of pitfalls when you're messing with the high-speed bypass. Anyways, that's what I got for today. You know, let's keep these uh, these cool old fuel injection systems running. Uh, I hope it helps somebody out there. Don't forget, like and subscribe if you appreciate some of the videos that I do and some of the content I share. Uh, I'll put a link down below for, you know, in case anybody's interested. That little microscope has turned out to be really handy in a, uh, a number of times. And you can actually put an SD card in it and, and take a picture of whatever you magnify. So you could share it with folks and that. And it's it was cheap. It was, I don't know, 40 bucks or something like that. Pretty inexpensive. So I'll put a link for that in there. And uh, also that set of uh, stainless balls in case. <laughs> nice. uh, I'm sorry. It's hotter than a firecracker out here. Again, summertime. I'm doing these videos. What an idiot. You know, why don't I wait? A I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you find good good use of my content, and we'll see you later. Thanks for watching, you guys. Take care.